Right, we're quickly going to talk about shooting in black and white. There's a, we're going to talk about this in more detail later. But for now, I want to just explain to you how you can actually visualise things in black and white when you're out for a day. Let's just say one day you wake up, you think, I want to do some black and white photography today to get some nice fine art prints, that kind of thing. Now, it's hard to visualise when you're seeing everything in colour and when you're seeing your shots come out in colour with digital, it's hard to kind of realise or it's kind of hard to know what they're going to look like as a finished product. So one way to do this, if you've got a, a capable DSLR that will do this, go into your menu function and set your picture style or one of your picture settings, which um, I know that Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Sony, a lot of these cameras do have. Look it up in your uh, manual and switch your camera to monochrome setting. But I'm going to explain one thing here quickly, what you should do. Learn to shoot RAW. If you have this set in JPEG, you can't convert it back, or most with most cameras, once you've taken a shot on monochrome setting with a JPEG, you cannot convert it back to colour afterwards. If you change your camera to RAW, you're receiving a lot more data onto the sensor and onto the onto your image, you can actually switch it back to colour later on when you get on, on the computer. So if you're going to shoot black and white for the day, change it to monochrome in your camera, but also shoot raw, because if you don't like the black and white shot, you prefer it in colour, you've then got both, you can actually change to. So I'm going to do that now, I've changed mine to monochrome inside, and I'm going to take a shot here in a black and white, if I can watch out for the sheep poo. Here we go. Okay, we've got a couple of sheep there, looks pretty good. Let's take that. And I'm going to expose to the sky because there's some fantastic clouds. And then I'm going to come back down, lock the exposure in, and take the shot. And on the back of the screen, you can see it's coming out in black and white. We're going to look at that on a computer in a bit. But let's just take another photo of the sheep there with the church in the background and the nice clouds. There we go and we've got a nice black and white shot. And what I'm going to do later on on the computer is show you how to emphasise the black and white, the clouds and the sky a bit more in black and white. One way of actually doing that, if you've got some really good fluffy clouds like we have today, and you know you're going to be shooting black and white, you can put a red filter on the front of the lens, and that will darken the sky but keep the, white, the, the clouds really, really white, and that emphasises the, the detail in the clouds. But for now, we'll have a look at those on the screen, and you can see basically the difference of, of seeing a, a shot in JPEG and a shot in RAW. So here we are with one of the shots that I took loaded into ACDC and you can see we've kept the sheep in the fore as foreground interest but we put them over slightly to the left. Uh, we've got the kind of working on the rule of thirds where the landscape edge comes right down here. We've got the clouds there, we've got the church in the background so overall not a bad shot. Um, but if you look at the next one that I've actually worked on you can see that we've darkened the sky quite a bit and that really emphasizes the clouds uh, and I'll show you how I did that in a minute it's very very simple but now we've added a lot more impact to the to the shot there's a lot more depth um, and your eyes are really drawn to the clouds here because they're a really good feature of the shot and there's the the land uh, sorry the portrait version that I took so these were taken in black and white but I'm just going to show you what happens here let's have a look I'm going to go into Canon's Digital Photo Professional and show you the raw images. So here we are in Canon's DPP. If you're a Nikon user then I'm going to show you another way of looking at these in a sec. But let's just bring up one of the photos that we took in the raw processing software and you can see it comes up in black and white. We shot it in black and white and if you look here at the picture styles it's set to monochrome which is what we set in the camera. Now if I wanted to change this back to colour, remember this is a raw shot if it wasn't raw this wouldn't be available none of this section would be available and we would just be working on the RGB channels and the brightness and contrast and everything so we wouldn't be able to convert back at this stage but if I want to convert this back to colour I simply go to the picture styles pick the one I want let's pick landscape and there we go we've got the colour image back so the beauty of shooting with your screen switched to black and white and shooting raw is that when you're taking the shots you can see how they're coming out in black and white which is brilliant but if you get back and you, you want a colour shot as well, you've got that. So you've got the best of both worlds. Let's just switch that back to monochrome. Um, so you can see the benefits of doing that with uh, with a Canon camera. Um, I can't show you this in with a Nikon camera or Olympus, but I'm pretty sure that they would do the same as long as you're shooting RAW. Now let's go into Lightroom now and show you how it how they load there. You can see here we've actually loaded them in and they've loaded as colour images. Now that's because the, the, they don't recognise the, the Canon picture styles. So if we click on one of these and we can work on it, I'll show you how I got that special effect. Do you remember 
here where the sky is darker I'll show you how easy it is to do in Lightroom now here we've got loaded some of the Kubota Lightroom presets so here we've got the the color image if I just go to which did I use you can see here as we roll over you can see in this little screen here the effects change so I used black and white infra one so if I click on that there we go we've instantly got a beautiful black and white image with really detailed clouds and it's just sorted out all of the um, the contrast and it just looks fantastic one simple click all we need to do now is export that as a JPEG image and we've got ourselves a lovely black and white shot so you can see the simplicity of shooting and uh, developing black and white photos but again shoot in with the with your camera set to monochrome but remember to shoot raw and then you can go out for the day shooting black and white to your heart's content and then come back and if you've got Lightroom you can make simple changes using some Lightroom presets now these cost about I think twenty dollars from Kubota's uh, Kubota image tools and you, you can see a link after this video so it's worth going there if you've got Lightroom to get hold of some of these because they're the same as Photoshop actions so have a look at those go out and practice shooting black and white and then have a play when you come home but always remember that you've got a color version should you ever need it